I want to uh, weigh in on a very interesting skirmish that is going on between the conservative black linguist, his name is John McWhorter, and uh, Mr. Anti-Racism himself, the uh, critical legal theory guru, uh, Ibram uh, Kendi. I first learned about this from Kendi, not from McWhorter, but Kendi is um, attacking an article that McWhorter published in the New York Times. The article is called Lower Black and Latino Pass Rates Don't Make a Test Racist. And um, Ibram Kendi goes um, that basically when you have a test and, and the facts are, are kind of clear, that the test that we're talking about is called the Association of Social Work Boards Test. This is to become basically a social worker. And it turns out that if you administer this test, uh, 84% of whites who take the test pass it, but only uh, 65% of Latinos and 45% of blacks. Now, I should say right at the outset that this pattern of uh, whites doing better, Latinos doing less well, blacks least well of all, applies to every test. No matter whether you're talking about a math test given at the seventh grade, or you talk about the LSAT or the GMAT to get into graduate school or the firefighters test or the police sergeant's exam, it doesn't matter what the test is, you name the test. You, if you administer it to a random sample of blacks, whites, Hispanics, and Asians, you will get this result. So this is what has to be explained. Why is it that different groups are doing so unequally? What Ibram Kendi basically goes is there are two possibilities. Either the test is racist or something is wrong with black people. And Ibram Kendi goes, since we all know that nothing is wrong with black people, therefore the test must be racist. This is literally the, the, the caliber of reasoning. So Ibram Kendi is in a sense daring you to say that there is something wrong with black people. Otherwise, he's forcing you to admit that the problem is not with the test takers, but with the test itself. And he sort of has McWhorter in this kind of a trap because he keeps saying that McWhorter in his article keeps qualifying his argument by saying, well, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with black people. And I think the problem here is that uh, the terms there's something wrong with black people is, is too general because Nobody is saying, and this is really what McWhorter should have clarified, that there's any throng, anything wrong with black people or, or with any group intrinsically. Nobody is saying that blacks or Latinos or any group is deficient intrinsically or naturally or biologically. But it is a simple fact that groups perform differently uh, pretty much in everything. Uh, and there are reasons for that. Groups perform differently uh, on the basketball court. Groups perform differently in the Olympic races, the short distances, the long distances. And groups perform differently on academic tests uh, of performance. Now, the reason for this very often can be traced. Uh, McWhorter is actually on the right track. At one point, he talks about the fact that he looks at things like, um, do blacks and whites are they equally likely to read books? And he goes on to show that, no, there have been studies that show that blacks actually read less than other groups. Uh, I've seen numerous studies, and by the way, my book, The End of Racism, now about 20 years old, but gets into this in excruciating detail. It has literally thousands of footnotes uh, that substantiate the case. Uh, but there are differences in family structure. There are differences in homework habits. If you just do a study and ask, for example, what is the average amount of time that is spent doing homework for different racial groups? You get huge differences. So is it any surprise that the behavioral differences, behavioral differences that themselves are rooted in differences of family structure and so on? Because obviously, it just simply makes sense if you have a two-parent family, there's going to be a little more time for the parents to supervise the upbringing and the homework habits habits of the children. Single parent family, mom's at work and has to cook and do other things when she comes home. Uh, obviously, there's going to be less um, uh, ability to do that. So the point here is that McWhorter is right and Kendi is wrong. But for, McWhorter to, for the McWhorter case to be more solid, you have to make a critical distinction uh, between falling behind due to intrinsic or genetic or biological factors. McWhorter is not saying that. I'm not saying that. By the way, I'm sometimes thrown in with the sociologist Charles Murray, uh, 
Dinesh and Murray are both in the same camp. No, we're not in the same camp. In fact, I've got a long chapter in my book, The End of Racism, which is a critique of Charles Murray's The Bell Curve. So I have never been on board with the idea of explaining racial differences in performance, in academic performance, by pointing to biology or pointing to genetics. On the contrary, I think it is cultural and behavioral factors that explain why some groups do better as they do than others. <laughs>